guys, Hilton Bariki here, uh, Vice Captain of the Sables and Scrum Off. You're watching Sables TV. This is Chris Gray from Sables TV. I am here with Hilton and Farai Mudariki. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi, how are you doing? Okay, so you just got off the plane, straight off the plane, into training. How are you feeling? And also, you can play for any country you want. You went to high school in South Africa, both of you. Why do you choose to play in Zim? The, the opportunity came and uh, it's an opportunity I... I couldn't say no to you. Everyone wants to play for their, for their country, and he actually convinced me. Like for I said, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity to, to represent your country, um, you know, at any level, to be honest. Um, and it came, it, it came at the right time um, for us, and, you know, it was, it's been awesome that we've managed to actually play together. For yeah, yeah. So do you guys remember the very first time you played together on the same team? Yeah. OGs, yeah. yeah. I think that was like in 2013 or 2014. 14. Yeah, Pride dominated that game. Um, yeah. you know, used a couple of people. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was really good fun. Okay, and in terms of your style of play, uh, coming back to Zim is obviously a different style of play than when you're in South Africa for now, you're moving to the UK and you're in France. So that style of play coming back into Zim and there's a number of players coming from outside Zim as well. How do you then gel as a team if everyone is coming from different places and you have different styles of play where you are? I guess for me, um, you know, we're quite lucky that we have... a. Uh, a coach in Peter who is very open to how people play. He wants us to play the way we want that, um, as an individual players. Um, mm. He obviously has a game plan that we have to follow, but he wants us to express um, ourselves. So it's nice to to come in and, and just try to fit into the game plan. Um, mm. You know, we're going to be working on that in the next couple of weeks. Um, but he also wants us to bring out our own uh, individual talents. And in terms of you guys going to high school in South Africa and then coming back home, you haven't been on the local school's rugby scene and, you know, here are these two great sparks. Did you face any kind of resistance or it was more a welcome, welcome back home? I'd say, I'd say it, was a, it was a welcome. And I think we just stayed in comms with, with what's happening here, over here. So I think the transition was quite easy and we were, we were accepted with open arms. Okay. Yeah. And everyone wants to know, ladies, this one is for you, not for me. Are you both single? Are you looking? Are you, you know, just sowing your wild oats as it were? <laughs> uh, we're both, both oh, I'm single. I don't know about Yeah, we, we're both single. We're both single. He's, he's more of the ladies' man in the family. So. <laughs> Is that necessarily true? It could be, it could be, it could, <laughs> could be, it could be. You're playing together on the same team. Who's more competitive between the two of you? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say you're more competitive, uh, but I think, like, I have a switch. Like, I'm not the same yeah. for I am in, like, a general life, mm -hmm. and I am in the field, like, I change. I'm not, I'm not the same person, so, yeah. Describe that alter ego for us. Well, I think th I think that's the reason why I play rugby. So I can I can have a like an opportunity where I have to switch on, really be focused. Because he will tell you like, in general, I'm just a relaxed guy, always laughing, chilled, type of thing. So I need like rugby to to form that balance in my life. Okay. I'd say yeah. And in terms of your schooling, how important is school for you guys in terms of you're playing rugby and you're going to be playing professionally. So where does school fit into that plan? And do you see yourself ever breaking away from rugby, maybe going into corporate life? Yeah, well, for me, um, I've been studying um, whilst I've been playing at UJ. Um, I've got a semester left in my degree. So that's, that's uh, I really want to finish What did that. you study, by the way? Uh, sports psychology. Okay. Um, so I want to get that done, uh, get it finished. So I've got something to, to fall back on. Um, it is important. I mean, you can, anything can happen at any time. You can go into a rugby game or a training session and something goes and that's your rugby career done. Yeah. So it's always good to have something to fall back on. And, you know, we're lucky that we've got a very supportive mom who's supported our careers, but she's also pushed that um, that study um, element into, into our lives. And now, obviously, the business of the Sables. You guys are back. You're going to be playing for the national team. When you started playing for the national team, I think you've had about 14 appearances now with the national team. How do you see any difference in terms of the structure and the coaching, all the money that's coming in? Are you seeing that difference as a player? Yeah, it's it's great to to have um, you know people coming on board and supporting us. Um, I feel like that's something that's lacked over the, over the years. Um, so it's really nice that we've got 
uh, people that have come on board that are backing us and supporting us. Um, you know, I've had different coaches throughout my life, and each coach is different. Um, so I'm really looking forward to working with Coach Peter uh, just to see what he what he brings to the party. He, I mean, he's a he's a coach who's been there, done it. Um, his record speaks for itself. So I'm really looking forward to to working with a world class coach. Um, and yeah, just really excited about it. There's a a completely different uh, vibe um, that I've never experienced in, in, in my time with the Sable, so I'm really looking forward to it. And for you, Farai, any difference? Yeah, I think it's just it's just a positive vibe, and I think I'm sure things that that, that will get things that will get things going. Um, yeah, Peter's a obviously a great coach, and to have him in the gym is obviously massive, and I really can't wait to work with him. And I think just for the players as well, it's just given us a a big boost to have investors and everyone just backing us and in our corner. And I just urge like us as players just to just to work really hard now. We don't have any excuses and we must just go qualify for this World Cup. Bonjour, je m'appelle Farai Mudariki. Je joue au poste de pilier droit pour les Sables de l'équipe nationale de Zimbabwe. Et vous êtes sur Sables TV. Merci. So, tell us one thing people would never guess about Farai. He's looking at you like, please don't squeal on me. <laughs> I can expose it. I just kind of think, Farai is actually quite a... Like, open I mean, book? like you said, he's a, yeah, he's, he's an open book. He's very chilled. Um, very, very chilled. Almost too chilled. And it, it, it like, almost irritates me sometimes how chilled he is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But he, he, like you said, he's got that switch. I've, he's a completely different beast in the rugby field. Um, but I also feel like he is... Um, very mature for his age. He, Farai used to be a Farai used to be a massive joke at school. He used to stress me out. I was a prefect when he was still around, ah. and he used to stress me out. But to see the way he's um, grown and, and become so mature is just amazing. Okay, you were really graceful, and I'm sure that's because it's his turn. <laughs> and I bet she's going to expose me. <laughs> um, if, if people look at how we are now, they would say we're we're really close. Mm -hmm. But uh, growing up, we were. We weren't at all like we used to fight quite a bit, get into a few scraps. But then, yeah, like that's the thing I'd say. Like people don't know about us now. You can see like a close bond, but like we sort of understand each other a little bit better. Yeah. And groupies? Do you guys have groupies, and how do you deal? With them? I don't think we're at that level yet. I'm not, I'm, we're not at that level yet. Yeah. Let's let's qualify for the World Cup first. Then we'll see. We'll see after. I like the focus. I like the we'll focus, see, but I'm sure yeah. that's not the truth. We'll see after. It's fine. Yeah. And your biggest fan, I'm sure, is your mom. How much has she contributed to you guys staying on course with this? You know, a lot of African parents are like, no, yeah. you know, you can't focus on sport, and she's basically let you guys do this, and you guys are focused on your sport. So your mom in this. Yeah, she like I mean, like I said earlier, she's been massive in our in our lives and our careers. Um, you know, not a lot of uh, parents would would support this, um, but she's been been there through the good times and the bad times. And I, I speak on behalf of both of us. We've we've really gone through some some, some really difficult times throughout the years um, in getting that breakthrough. And geez, we're just so lucky that both our breakthroughs have come literally within months of each other. Um, so my, our mom has had a yeah, massive role to play, very supportive, and she's always massive. So whenever she can travel to come watch us play, um, she's always there. Um, yeah. So really and you're awesome. off to the UK soon. Yeah. Are you nervous about that at all? Very excited. Um, as I said, it's something that I've been working for, I'd say, my whole life. Um, and to, just to get that breakthrough after almost giving up. Um, it's just a relief that I you know, managed to stick it out. And thanks to my brother and my mom for helping me through it um, because yeah, I went through some really dark times. So I'm very excited, very nervous. Um, it's a new, new place, new environment, new teammates, yeah. new style of playing. Um, so I'm just, I just really can't wait, wait to get over there. Um, but yeah, we have a job to do here and that's, that's my priority at the moment in helping the Sabres qualify. Okay, and one message to all of the Zimbabweans who normally wouldn't support the Sables. There's a huge turnout in terms of support for the Sables right now. Something you'd want them to know from each of you? I would say like we, we have a, an opportunity to achieve greatness. So like why not get on board? Like it's right there standing in front of us. We only have four games to qualify for a World Cup, so if everyone gets behind us, imagine imagine what we can do. Yeah. I mean if you if you look if you look throughout the history of rugby, rugby's a, a sport that's changed a lot of lives. It's brought people together. Um, and that's what we're hoping this this campaign will do for us. Um, you know, bringing the whole of Zim together, getting people that, you know, were 
were part of rugby before and they and if they stopped supporting for whatever reason um, to get back on board and to support us um, it's like I said there's a, there's a different vibe a vibe that I've never felt um, in my time with the Sables so I just urge people just to, to get on board to support the Sables and uh, help us to qualify for the World Cup all right, cool. Thank you so much, guys, for your time. I'm going to leave you guys. I'm sure you have training to do. Thank you so and, much. And uh, I think we all need to just use the hashtag, and that hashtag is eyes on the prize. My name is Chris Gray for Sables TV. Thank you for joining me.